Hey everyone, welcome back to On The Grid. And in this video, we are going to be talking about CDS or the complete dash set for ACC. If you're new to sim racing, third-party add-ons can make a big difference, not only in immersion, but also knowing what is going on during a race with your car and on track. For seasoned players, no need to explain how essential these things are. This dashboard app was created by NC Theorem, and we'll walk through getting it installed and set up. But first, I do love stories behind products. So let's look at where this all began. NC had been creating dashes for F1, AC, and Race Room using Dash Studio before going on to release CDS, but the first complete dash set release was done in January 2019 on Race Department. We gotta love Race Department, right? But the actual development started about four months earlier, just after ACC was released in early access, and the first version had about four cars, Bentley, uh, the BMW M6, 488 from Ferrari, and the Lamborghini Huracan. At that time, shared memory didn't support the automatic car change feature, which is really one of the key features in CDS. So it wasn't added until about May 2019. The automatic dash and LEDs loads based on the selected car and it replicates the exact in-car dash. Once ACC was officially released in May 2019, CDS released an update about nine days later. It was put on hold due to the ACC shared memory being unfinished. He had to basically go through all the dashes again when the API had a big overhaul. So instead of sitting back, he decided to be proactive and contact Kunos through the ACC forums, telling them basically that the API was useless. And magically, they listened, which is quite rare. July 2019 rolls around and the next big update was released. Development was full on, so NC decides to meet the Kunos guys at the Blanc Plan GT3 race at Nürburgring during the last weekend of August. I'm so jealous. Then, in September 16th, 2019, the first release was there with all the features working. Automatic dash switching per car, automatic dash switching per page, layout file for hardware LEDs with the automatic switching per car. But everything was really coming together nicely, though there were still a few cars missing. That goes down to dash complexity. On October 2019, another big update for the 2019 season went live. All the car dashes and LEDs working. So now he decides to switch focus and do a complete rework of all the dashes as well as implementing some community requested features, which is always nice to see. Fast forward to 2020 and the beautiful pandemic upon us. Don't even want to go there. More user gadgets were started to be added, such as tire pressures pit screen, the color picker for dash backgrounds, and plug-in settings were now moved from a file to the registry. So this really kept all your settings anytime there was an update. Race logic, which is another key feature, was added along with the second dash set or the second screen, which is geared towards smartphones. It would show either the RaceLogic V-Box or the Motex C187 or 127, which is in the Ferrari. So not stopping there, he decides to add audible feedback. And that would beep anytime you needed to shift up. And as the revs increased faster from, say, first and fourth gears, users were able to set the RPMs when to beep for every gear in every car individually. And next, the UI had some really nice updates to it as well. Now, July 2020, the GT4 pack is released and ACC CDS was ready to roll supporting the new DLC along with ignition screens. So basically what would happen is when you start the car before the ignition would go on, the manufacturer logo would come up and then the ignition would turn on and then the dash would load. So a really nice feature that was added. So as you can imagine after that development roadmap, it was time for a break away from CDS. Now, just before holidays, November 2020, New job, a new energy, and a new update with two new ACC cars. So CDS receives an update to support these two cars and some new features. So audible feedback values can now be set in the pits with another page of the pit screens dash. And the refresh rates can now be set for the three shared memory files. So let's get to the install and I'll show you how we get up and running. All right, so to start with the install, first thing we need to do is we need to go grab two things. We need to grab SimHub, and then we're gonna go over to Race Department and grab the CDS uh, software. So we're going to download SimHub now from here, from simhub-.com. So while that is down, this is version 7.3.2, which is the latest version. So we'll let that download. In the meantime, let's go over to Race Department. And in Race Department, under Assetto Corsa Competition, under the miscellaneous category, you'll see here, if you rate it by downloads, you'll see that it has, let me get rid of that ad, you'll see that it, it'll come up first. So we get complete dash set here, version 1.8.3. So we'll download this at the same time. SimHub is downloaded. ACC CDS is downloaded, and that's pretty much all we need to do. So we're going to get in with the install. Okay, so first thing we'll do, let's go to our downloads folder here. 
and we're going to install SimHub first thing. So 7.3.2, we'll get that installed. I'll be back in two seconds and we'll install CDS. Okay, so now we see SimHub over here install. Let's just double click that. We'll open it up just to make sure everything is working okay. And this should load up uh, with no issues. So you can purchase the full edition. That's not really important for now. We're just going to make sure that the game is, uh, or the application is running correctly. So we can see all our games here. This is the one we'll be working with. So we can see here also in the additional plugins, there's nothing in there currently. So let's quit this out. And we're going to go back to our downloads folder. And we're going to install ACC CDS 183. So what we're going to do is we'll just extract that. We don't need to buy anything. Let's extract all that. We'll just extract it into our downloads folder. I don't need to create a new folder for that. So we are good to go there. Now we see here set up ACC CDS. Let's just double click that and we'll run through the install with this. So go through next. Just make sure that it shows here in your program files that it's navigating to SimHub. So we're good to go. Let's just run through this installation. Complete dash set version 1.8 being installed. All right, so we are good. It is done and ready to go. Okay, so both things are installed now. Now what we need to do is let's load up SimHub. It should detect right away that a new addition has been added in. So you can see here SimHub has detected a new plugin, version 1.8. Let's make sure we add that. So we're good to go. And let's just widen this up a little bit here just to get a better view. So now we see here under additional plugins, NC Ferrum plugin is installed there. One thing I would do is just go to settings and make sure this is disabled to start with Windows. It's just better to not have SimHub load up every time unless you know for sure that you're just it's just a dedicated sim racing uh, computer uh, then you know you can leave that enabled but i choose to have that off so once we go into additional plugins here we're going to go over to the nc ferrum plugin uh, section under additional plugins and let's look at the options so there's a few things you can have you have them lined up with your sub menu dash second dash hardware audible feedback shared memory and info and credits so what you can do is you can choose to have either the simple race position widget, you can have the blinking gear in the background, which is where the gear is. You'll see a flash on the, uh, you know, on the gear once it's time to shift. You can show the ignition screens as well. You can do tire pressures. You can change your background color from here. And this will be a global change. So if you change this to green, it will be green on all dashes. Now what this is for is in some cars like uh, the AMG where the MoTeC display has bars on the side. If you want to have a different color other than gray, or if you want to have something just kind of fill out maybe black, just so that the dash stands out a bit more, you can change that in here. So you would just go in and select black and make that your color. On second dash options, you can show the race logic uh, device for all cars. You can show flag indicators as well. You can have the hardware LED. So there's a few different options. And this one is a great one, which is a audible feedback option. So this plays a uh, beep, when you need to shift and you can customize this per car per gear and you can tell it exactly when you want this beep to happen uh, shared memory options and then of course info and credits so let's go back through dash options now what we need to do three things that we need to do one we just need to make sure that the plugin is installed so we see it here next thing we're going to do is go to arduino over here and we're going to go under rgb leds so we have no profiles running in here for the hardware leds so what we want to do is we're going to go to Profiles Manager and we're going to go to a, uh, where is it here? Import Profile. Okay, so we see it takes us right away to Documents, SimHub, ACC, CDS. We're going to go to the Hardware LEDs and we're going to select all these profiles here. So we're just going to select that one to the bottom and we're going to import them. So just basically click Open. That will load all these up. And then the only thing you need to do is just double click this and that will enable the whole thing. So we are good to go with that. If we want to just check, let's go into Profiles Manager. It's all there, good to go. So we have all our hardware LEDs set to run. And then the third thing that we need to do is we're going to go over to Dash Studio. And we're just going to go through here. We'll scroll down. We'll find out where it is. It should be at the bottom one categorized. So we hear, see here the complete dash set version 1.9. Now the dash is 1.9, but the plugin is version 1.8. So what we can do is you can have it set to auto and uh, you know basically customize it how you want. I like to favorite it so that it pops up at the top right away. I mean, you can favorite the second screen as well. So if we go back to the top now, so the next time we load up uh, a game or we come back to SimHub, it should populate at the pot at the top showing last used. But we can also click this here and just show our favorites. So if I just want to just see these two, I can use that as well. All right. So now if we look at the launch option, 
If we click the start button here, we have a few different places where we can display this. So either we can have it windowed and if I click this, I'll show you exactly what it does. It just brings up a dash here. And when I load ACC in the specific car that I'm in, it will display here. So that's one option. I can also click start and have it go on to a second monitor if I have uh, you know, multiple screen set up and I have one monitor that has all my uh, additional apps and stuff. I can display it on there. I can display it on a specific monitor of my choice that I want to, like on maybe monitor number two or monitor number three. I can also display it on the phone or tablet, which is how I run it. I run with my iPad and my iPhone, so I could have a couple of different options there. And so if you do that, you just basically click this and with your phone, you either enter the URL or you can just scan the QR code with your phone. And that's usually what I do. And then I save the link so I don't have to do this all the time. So that's a really good way to do that. And I absolutely love running it off my phone. You can also run it on the Vocor screen or the USB D480 screen. So if you purchase one of those external uh, USB uh, little displays, you can run it that way, which is a lot of times how people will choose to run this. But what's nice about it is it gives you all the flexibility of how you want to run this. Now, let's load up uh, ACC and we'll load up a couple of dashes and we'll see what they look like in game. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, let's take out the Porsche 911 GT3R and we'll load that up and we'll see, I'll show you how we get the dash running and I'm going to run it basically on the, as a st standalone window. So here we are, let's go back to Dash Studio and we'll get this running. So we're gonna run the complete dash set. We'll run it as a windowed version. We'll just let that load up. Okay, so we have the windowed version of the dash loaded up and as soon as I click drive, First thing you're going to see, because I do have the ignition screen enabled, is you're going to see the Porsche logo load up. And then as the ignition starts, it will switch to the dash. So let's do that now. Green light. Go, go, go. And there we have it. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Okay, so what I do want to show you now is where I changed the background color. I switched it to black. Let's take out a car that does have a square uh, MoTeC display. So we'll get out of this and I'll load up another car. Okay, so here I have the Audi, and the Audi does have a square dash or a square uh, MoTeC display. So we'll see once again, the logo should load up, go, go, go. and then we'll have black bars to fill in the sides. There we go. So really quite easy, really quite simple, and this is a fantastic tool to have whether you want to run it on uh, an iPhone, you want to run it on your tablet, another monitor, a USB LED display. Whatever you want, you have those options to do so. So let's try another car. All right, so here we have the KTM. Let's click drive. We'll get the KTM logo. And then we'll see the dash. Let's switch out back so you can see a little bit further away. So we can see here the dashes match. Everything's working correctly. And one other thing I do want to show you is we'll quit this out and I'll load up the race logic. So if I do want to load the second screens, for example, if I want to have it on my tablet or a phone or another monitor, I can go ahead here with the second screen and we'll just load that up. We see here we have the race logic. Let's make this a bit smaller. We don't need it so big. And let's just move this in here. Let's go back to uh, ACC and here we go. So now we have the race logic running so we can get rid of this and we have the dashboard running. So I think, I mean, these tools are so essential and they just make the racing experience all the more better. So um, yeah, really great. So let's jump out of here. All right, so that is a quick look at how to get up and running with Assetto Corsa Capizione's complete dash set from NC Ferrum. Remember to make sure you have SimHub installed, download the two files. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Before we go, a couple of cool things that are coming down the road, just to give you a kind of what is what is in the pipeline. So the second screen option is coming for the tablets, which is going to have race logic, MoTeC, the pit screen, and the Lumi rank, which is the new feature that we're seeing in ACC. This is going to all be on one screen, and you can move it around how you want, adjust it, uh, tailor it to how you want, what you want being seen on there. So that's a really cool thing that's coming for those who do like to use, you know, tablets or phones. Also, the position can be set anywhere on the screen, and it's all on one screen. This should all release when the Brit GT pack goes live, so hopefully quite soon. In closing, just want to send out a shout out to guys like NC and Mr. Belowski and so many others who create these add-on experiences for us sim racers. You know, a lot of work goes into this and it's driven by passion. So cheers guys, and until next time.
Take care.